Welcome. I'm so glad that you've joined us once again. And I'm sitting here at my kitchen table with uh, the one I call Beautiful Bell. She's my oldest granddaughter, Rachel Ruth's oldest daughter. Her name is Ruth Bell Wright. She was named for my mother and um, does my mother honor, I think, and the way she conducts herself and everything. But she has some news, so maybe it would relate to some of you. I'm graduating from high school this week, and obviously it's different because of everything that's going on. But we'll have a live graduation in August, um, but I still miss everything that was supposed to happen this week. Yeah, so. so it's tough, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And so I think you even said that on this day you would have had a special dinner for seniors where the teachers serve them in the, the cafeteria and um, lots of fun things that your school does for seniors that she's missing. and. That made uh, Bell and I think about you and just wonder if there's some of those of you out there who are also graduating and locked down and you can't go through your graduation ceremonies and stuff. Um, one of the things that's helped occupy Bell is she can't get a summer job or at least she hasn't tried because it's hard um, during this lockdown, but she has, she needs money. So she's starting to sell uh, some beauty products and mm -hmm. can you just, because you can tell that Bell loves makeup and it comes naturally because I love makeup, her mom loves makeup and um, so this is sort of something you enjoy and you do it so well. So It's called Beauty Counter and the website is beautycounter.com slash bellwright and we can put it in the link. Um, but it's clean beauty products, skincare and makeup and um, I just really enjoy all of that and so. Um, so clean, so like mine are dirty. <laughs> no. <laughs> so clean just means what? Like um, natural, all natural ingredients, um, none of the harmful chemicals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, okay. Yeah, well, um, yeah. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what that is. But um, anyway, I just wanted you to meet Belle and then I really asked her if she would come and sit at my kitchen table and let me share with her what's on my heart for her graduation. And I wanted to give her this. This is a show her first <laughs> and then I'll show you. <laughs> but it's a little book that I wrote, The Daniel Key, based on um, the prophet Daniel's life. And he was younger than you. He was maybe in his early teens when he was taken from Jerusalem to Babylon and enslaved. And one of the early choices he made, the subtitle of the book is 20 Choices That Make All the Difference. And in Daniel chapter one, it said that he chose not to defile himself. And that choice just paid big dividends all of his life because he chose to be um, tr true to his faith in God. And so we can learn from his life. And I, and I wrote it for graduates. Um, I put in the presentation page for Bell, I put um, Deuteronomy chapter six, verse five, because that's when God says that we're to love him with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And so that's a life's choice, that if you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, everything else really falls in the proper place. But we all make choices, and the choices that we make that are good, um, you know, really bear good fruit down the road. If we make bad choices, we can get ourselves into a mess. And so I wanted to tell you about some choices I made when I was your age and I was graduating from high school. And um, I graduated from a big county high school up in the western part of our state. And uh, we didn't, uh, I went through a graduation ceremony, but the week before we had what was called the baccalaureate. So it's a Sunday service for seniors. And this baccalaureate was held in the big auditorium in Montreat, um, actually the same auditorium where my mother's service was held. And a lot of things have gone on in that auditorium that are memorable, but um, one of them was my baccalaureate service. And so um, mother said I could take her little car and pick up my friends and go with them to the service. And so I was having a hard time. I was upstairs in the bathroom. I was trying to put, oh, excuse me, I didn't show you the hat. This, <laughs> this cute, cute little, yeah, funny <laughs> square mortarboard that's got her um, tassel on it, got the 20, year 20 on it. But I had a hat like that. My tassel was a little bit different, but I was trying to get it on over my hair. And, and it just didn't work. And so I kept spraying my hair. So my hair was getting stiffer. And the hat, but finally, I just you know threw it on, ran down the steps, ran out the door. I, hollered over my shoulder, told mother and daddy that I was running late so I would meet them at the auditorium. So, uh, you know, the road up to, you, she calls my mother and daddy, um, Tete and Daddy Bill. So going up to their house, there's just this winding mountain, one lane road. And so I got in mother's car and uh, I hit the accelerator and I just straightened out those curves. I was so familiar with that driving car, boom, 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 just, 
and I came around one big curve and there was a big white Buick Riviera coming up the mountain and I slammed on the brakes and jerked the car up to, up a clay bank but not before the Buick hit me broadside in the driver's door and I could hear the crunching metal and the breaking glass and and then the wheels were spinning you know and so I stopped and I um, just horrified but I was late so I couldn't get out the door, so I climbed over the stick shift, went out the passenger side, went around, and there was the driver of the Buick with her eyes. She just looked like she was a deer caught in the headlights, and her, her name was Mrs. Pickering, and she was coming up to sit in the house when Mother and Daddy and I were gone, just house sit. Mm -hmm. And and I said, Mrs. Pickering, I said, I'm so sorry. I said, it's all my fault. I shouldn't have been driving so fast. I said, just help me get the fender up off the tire so I can get this little car going. And I said, but please, Miss Pickering, don't tell my daddy. Just please, I'll tell him, but not right now. I've just got time to think about it. I don't have time to think right now, so don't tell my daddy. So she didn't say anything, but she helped me pull the fender up off the wheel. And I went down the mountain, went through Black Mountain to pick up my friends and looked in the rearview mirror and here was a blue light and I was being pulled over by a policeman. <laughs> and so I stopped the car and rolled down the window and I, I started to cry even before he said, well, Misty, I said, you've been in a wreck. And I said, yes, sir. He said, are you hurt? And I said, no. He said, well, you drive more carefully next time. And anyway, then he left. And I just, by then I was shattered emotionally. I was just sobbing and the mascara was coming down. And, I picked up my friends and they said, what in the world has happened to you? And so I told them on the way to the auditorium and when we got to the auditorium, I parked the car so that the bashed inside was in the bushes and nobody would see it and report it to my mother. And then I got into the uh, line that was processing into the auditorium just, you know, when I needed to be there. So I scooted in the line, went into the auditorium, sat several rows from the front and um, and I don't remember the program at all, but my daddy, your daddy Bill, was the speaker. And I, I remember thinking, I just hope I look like everybody else, you know, because everybody had on a white cap and white gown, and I was sitting there hoping I looked very generic and that my daddy wouldn't notice me. You know, so he's, I just remember him striding up to the podium, standing in the podium, and then he just looked right at me. And I just could feel myself just going down. And, and then he said, told everybody in the auditorium how much he loved me, how wonderful I was, how I never caused him or mother any problems, and I just got lower and lower and just, ah, I don't remember the rest of what he said. I don't remember his, <laughs> his Sunday sermon that was supposed to be so memorable. When it was over, I just made a beeline for the car, and somebody grabbed me, and they said, Ann, your father's looking for you. And I thought, oh my goodness, now judgment's coming. And I went out front, and there was just a whole bunch of reporters and they just wanted to take a picture of daddy with his graduating senior so uh, they did and the next day on the front of the Asheville Citizen Times was a picture of daddy adjusting my hat and I had mascara streaks on my face <laughs> I know they thought that I was crying because I was so emotional having graduated but they didn't know I'd just been in a wreck and ruined mother's car but anyway went back and took my friends and took them home and then I started just going very slowly back up that same winding road and and I was saying, God, please, I'm going to tell my daddy, and I'll tell him what I did, but not now. I've got time to, th I have to think about how to approach him and how to say it. So, so just have my daddy anywhere, but don't have him by the front door. Let him be back in his study. Just don't let him be by the front door. So I, I pulled into the driveway. I parked the side of the car that was bashed in away from the front door. I went to the front door, and you know, I had a screen door which sort of squeaks when you open it and so I opened it very carefully so it wouldn't squeak and I slipped inside and I just turned around I was going to go shooting up the steps to, to run up to my room and I turned and there was my daddy standing right there and you had piercing blue eyes and he was just looking at me and I was just like oh my goodness and and then I made a choice Bill and this is a choice that I want you to remember instead of running upstairs instead of running away I ran to my daddy and I put my arms around his neck and I just began to sob. And I said, oh, daddy, daddy, you never would have said all those nice things about me if you'd just known what I'd done. And then I told him what I'd done, that I'd been driving too fast, I ran into Miss Pickering, I ruined mother's car, and, and I just was so sorry. And then my daddy said four things to me, Bill, that were life's lessons, and these I want to pass on to you, and I want to pass these on to you also. And the first thing my daddy told me, and I love you. And then he said, I knew all along about the wreck because Ms. Pickering came right up and told me. And then he said, I was just waiting for you to tell me. And he said, we can fix the car and you're going to be a better person because of it. 
And as I thought about that, I thought, you know, we all get in wrecks. We all make mistakes. We all do things where somebody else gets hurt or we're hurt. Um, and it can be not, you know, an automobile accident. It can be a um, relational wreck, something where your feelings get hurt, or it can be something, um, you know, uh, social or spiritual or, I mean, just things that we do that we shouldn't have done um, where somebody else gets hurt and we get hurt. And those, those times come in life and they just happen to everybody. But when that happens to you, and I want to speak to those of you who are graduating seniors and I want to speak to Bill, when they happen to you, sweetheart, you just remember those four things, okay? Don't run away from your Heavenly Father. You run to Him. Put your arms of faith around His neck and you tell Him what you've done, okay? Just don't, don't try to play games with it. Don't dress it up. Don't make it seem less than it was. You just be honest and you tell Him exactly what you've done mm -hmm. and you're going to hear Him say those same four things. And He's going to say, Bill, I love you. And God loves you. God loves you. And then He's going to say, I saw exactly what you did. God, God sees behind closed doors. He sees um, in the dark. There are no secrets with God. So you just tell him because he knows about it anyway, but he's waiting for you to come tell him. And, and then he's going to say, well, I'm going to fix it. And, and then um, you'll be, be a better person because of it. So I found in my life that the hard times, the, the difficult times, the times when um, you know, there are policemen standing around and they say, ah, Belle, you made a mistake. You know, you shouldn't have done that. And they, they judge you, they criticize you, and um, they're not helpful at all. And I don't want to be a policeman like that in your life or somebody else's life. But when those things happen, we need to make our own choice and we need to run to our Heavenly Father so that he can say, I love you. I knew all about your wreck. I'm just waiting for you to come tell me, and I'm going to fix it, and you'll be a better person because of it. And the difficult things I've been through, the hard things, the subsequent uh, consequences of wrong choices I've made have made me, when I've come through and brought them to the Lord, made me stronger in my faith and made me, um, I think, more tender-hearted towards others. You know, there's no room for self-righteousness or judgmentalness. I can't say, ah, oh, you shouldn't have done that when I've done it too, you know. Maybe not exactly the same thing, but we all make mistakes and, and fail. And so so when we do that, we just um, don't want to be pointing our fingers, but just let other people know that they can run to their Heavenly Father and that He will receive them because God loves you and He's waiting for you to come tell Him what you've done. And He's going to tell you that He knew it all along, but that He can help fix it, and he'll make you a better person because of it. So um, the Lord bless you as you graduate, and the Lord keep you, make his face to shine upon you, and be gracious unto you, and the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and forevermore. God bless you.